Welcome to the Life of Hair. My name is James Atkinson. Thank you for joining me in this week's episode. Now, this is an episode that I have been requested numerous times, and I've done uh, similar videos, but not necessarily on curly hair. Now, I want to mention one thing about a succession of videos I'd like to do over the next few months, and that is just commercial, normal hair work that I do to pay my bills. Not the super fancy, pretty, beautiful, blow-dried, tongued, brushed out, Instagram worthy, Instagram ready pictures that we all think we need to produce now to create the sort of work that people are going to want to buy. No, just the normal stuff, the day in, day out, diffused it dry, my client went home perfectly happy. I think we've got obsessed on social media with these kind of beautiful waves all brushed out and the light catching and ring lights and blah, blah, blah. That's great, but we don't always have time for that. I know over the last few months when I've gone back into the salon in between COVID lockdowns, I have not got the time for beautiful blow dryers. I'm getting my clients in the door and out the door as best as humanly possible because I need to make a living like you do. Now that's no disrespect to my clients, they understand I haven't got the time to finesse their hair, maybe like I did previously, when I had assistance and help and all that jazz. And if you work on your own, it's even harder. So look, take the pressure off yourself, make sure that you produce content for Instagram or whatever social media platform you use, because it helps your business grow see people seeing the stuff that you produce even if it's just a close-up or a little pan on the camera you know pick up your iphone little pan across something that people know that you're there but you don't have to go mad and i really want to kind of drive that home with this next few months of videos and i say months i'm going to intersperse these videos with others but just want to reiterate that it's not all about that glamour wave and Instagram ready photo. We are commercial hairdressers making a living. Anyway, that is my piece. I'm fed up of everyone feeling the pressure of social media. I really want you guys to understand that it's not even, you know, somebody that's like me that's putting stuff out there all over the place. Not everything I do looks like it's ready to go in a glossy magazine. It's just not reality. So don't feel that pressure, guys. Just make sure that you get a little snippet, a glimpse, a snapshot. It doesn't have to be a full-blown ring light, you, you name it. Just get some footage out there of what you do, but don't stress about the quality and I'll delete it later and all that jazz. Just do it. Rant over. Have a wonderful week. And if you enjoyed this episode of Life of Hair, then you know what to do. Please hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, and chat to me down in the comments below. I'll see you in the next one. So here's our starting point. Lovely, lovely curly hair. I am a massive curly hair fan. As you can probably guess, having it on my head myself. Um, so my client came in, never, ever, ever had she coloured her hair before. Um, there's a little bit of lightness towards the ends. It's just purely from sun lightning. So, you know, she wanted something soft, dimensional, but she didn't want something that was going to kind of run her over, you know, not going to be too light, but she wanted to be able to see it within her dark hair. So the technique that I've used is zigzag sections on the scalp um, to really diffuse and break up any lines. Then I've taken a deep V-shaped weave with about one and a half centimetres of hair to approximately one centimetre of space in between of those each of those weaves. And then I've backcombed one long continuous backcomb stroke back up to the roots to avoid the hair getting really, really knotty. I've covered the hair with ProCare uh, Perspex Acetate Sheeting. You can find that. Uh, very very easily and I really really like that product it can be a little bit on the heavy side sometimes but I do like it it's much much easier to use on your own than clean film um, now this particular technique look I'm not going to show you every single section that I take on this particular uh, technique I'm going to show you the majority of the back here and I'm going to show you the whole of the left side because I very much feel it's such a, a repetitive technique that there's kind of 
absolutely no need to keep going over and over each and every one of the sections. Saturation is king, remember guys, always, always saturate the hair really, really well. I'm using Redkin clay lightener or freehand lightener with a uh, 10 volume developer here. I do not want tons and tons of lift. I want to get her up to an eight at the very, very most. Um, I'm going to tone it down to an eight. So there's no need to kind of lift it to a nine or a 10. I don't mind having a little bit of oranginess in the lift as well, because I'm going to put some uh, 8.1 on her hair or 8.8 .8, dependent on the finished result obviously when I start this technique I've got an idea of how I want to finish it um, so if there's some orange present the 8 is mocha or the level sorry is 8 the tone is 8 which is mocha which is caramel which is a mixture of violet and orange or copper dependent you know on how you look at that color um, and then the mocha has also got violet added into it. So that subdues down that orangey uh, coppery colour and, and creates that lovely rich caramel shade. And then it's also the option of having the 8.81. And the one is blue ash. And that will obviously help to uh, eliminate any of the orange colour that you may see from this lift. Now, Actually, it lifted really, really well. Um, I did 8.8, .8, so just the mocha shade on its own. That's in the Redkin HD resolution. Um, and then I added in a little bit of the 8.81, um, just to be sure that we didn't get kind of too much copper orange results coming through. I wanted it to be um, sunk down a little bit, you know, to prevent that from happening. So, yeah, definitely, definitely, you know, worth uh, bearing these things in mind. And if you do get an orange lift and you want to combat orange, remember that blue is the opposite tone to orange. And so you need to put some blue in there. If you've got a lift and it's got some orange in it and maybe say it's a yellow orange result, um, you'll need violet, but you'll probably need a little bit of blue. So you need a violet blue shade to counteract that. Um, and you'll probably be on a level eight, pushing a level nine, just so you understand where you might be in the sphere of levels as well, because level and tone run hand in hand. And the reason that is, is because, for instance, let's say when you're uh, a level 10, you're always going to be pale yellow. You're never going to be orange. If you've got orange present, that means that you need to come down with your estimations of where you are. If you can see orange in the hair and yellow, then you're not at a seven because seven's orange, but you're going to be eight towards an eight and a nine, somewhere in between the two. Because remember, guys, it's hair colour and it doesn't just stop at ten, nine, eight. There's a whole plethora, a whole spectrum of shades in between the two. So if you're seeing orange, and it's getting darker, then you're pushing towards that seven. If you're seeing orange, you can still be in that eight realm. So remember that, guys, it's really, really massively important. Zigzag sections, deep weaves throughout, one long back comb to diffuse, and then liberally apply that product, go in and then disperse that product with that backhanding technique. Really love getting my hands involved in balayage technique. Uh, I think it's a really, really useful thing to do to distribute the product evenly and smoothly through the hair. So one thing to remember, obviously, when we're working with these techniques is this control of saturation. I've mentioned it before. I'll mention it again. I know I will. We're going for full saturation on 50% of the hair. So 50% of the hair is completely saturated all the way through, as I just mentioned. But then that final half of the hair from that point up to the roots is blended with our hands. Hand blending is one of my favourite ways to distribute the product. What we've got to make sure, though, is the top of the hair, we're not pressing the product through the hair too much. We'll start to create a very, very untidy, not very aesthetically pleasing look if we start to put too much pressure. We are simply just guiding the, the colour, the lightener, up the hair. We're not trying to push down too hard 
So it's a really gentle, easy movement. And it doesn't happen quickly, but it's also not a slow thing either. You don't want to rush it, but it's not going to distribute really slowly either. So just be really, really aware of that when you're doing these kind of techniques or you're practicing and it doesn't seem to be traveling up the hair very well. You just need more lightener, but not more lightener at the at the point you want to transition from. You need more lightener on the ends to work up that transition. Really, really important there, guys. Something to remember as you work through these techniques. If your product isn't spreading, it will just look like you've put a line in the hair. It'll have a really harsh finish to it. You do need to distribute that product. And remember about the underneath of the section. Really, really important also. So as we work up the head here, you'll, you'll, you'll note that I'm using horizontal sections. There's not really any need to go diagonal when you're back combing because obviously the, the softness is created by the back combing. Uh, as many of you will know, diagonal lines generally emphasise softness. If this hair was poker straight, I'm going to be worn poker straight all the time, maybe I would go in with that kind of uh, diagonal line to emphasize the softness. But really when you're back combing 95% of the time, there's not really any need to kind of change your angle. You just wanna systematically work up the head using horizontal sections. There really is not a lot of benefit to creating different angles to emphasize the softness. The softness comes from the back combing. Um, Lots of people ask about the removal of back combing as well in the comments section. Something to remember, guys, when we're removing the back combing, it really stems from how we put it in. So you'll notice in a second, I've taken my weave uh, and the weaves on the sides here have changed a little bit. They're a little bit finer. They're a little bit less deep and um, they're not so chunky because there's less hair in the sides and want to be a little bit more delicate but anyway I digress quickly you'll see that when I back comb these sections it's very very smooth and long brush stroke it's super duper easy to get it out when we're at the back wash rinse all the lightener out shampoo the hair don't take out the back combing condition the hair don't take out the back combing rinse out the conditioner tone the hair don't take out the back combing and then finally go in and condition the hair for one last time and remove your back combing. And at that point, just by going through all those processes, nice and gently, you don't have to, if you're too aggressive, you will create more tighter uh, back combing. But if you're just gent gentle about the way you approach that, you will start to relax that back combing out of the hair without any extra effort. It's the way I've been going about it recently, and I really, really like that as a result. So if you haven't tried that, then go through all your processes and ignore the back combing until the very, very final stage. And post toning, remove your back combing. Does that make sense? Because your back combing and your toner, yeah, if you've got, you know, balayage pieces all the way right back up to that, then apply your toner all the way right up to the edge. But you, you won't have bits of lightness up in the back combing area unless your back combing is not very strong and it starts to slip down and then you might have to remove your back combing prior. That is how I go about removing back combing. I did a video about it a little while ago how I remove back combing uh, so if you want to go and check that out it's over in my playlists. If you go over to YouTube you can search the life of hair how to remove back combing and that will bring the video up as well if you want to search for it very very quickly and concisely so I hope you enjoy that one and if you do then join me in the comment section let me know what you think um, it was something that someone brought up a little while ago and it's just a very commercial environment you know like this is um, I like these videos I like these kind of you know m me at work doing hair um, very very inconspicuous because I think this is what hopefully a lot of you are doing, you know, making money from doing hair behind the chair. And um, I really, you know, do enjoy helping you on that journey. So we're at the end of this technique. Wipe my hands, job done. And you can see the lift here is a level eight. You can see some orangey golden tones in there. That is perfectly satisfactory to remove it. And this is the finished result. 
So we diffused it dry. Um, and as I said at the beginning of this video, look, it's not like Instagram, oh, you know, taking pictures, you know, getting overexcited. It's just the way she wears her hair naturally. It's beautiful in my opinion. Um, I know lots of people are scared of having, uh, you know, curly hair in their Instagram pictures because it's not, you know, all this tongued and whatever, but I love it. And, you know, I, I've got friends who are making their own ripples in this industry using just curly hair as their kind of uh, main focus, if you will. So yeah, amen to the curly hair girls that are out there that are really rocking the world of curly hair. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I hope that gives you some insights into maybe how you might approach someone with very curly hair who wants a fresh, brand new balayage technique. And I will see you again very, very soon for another episode of The Life of Hair.